Now, after the failure of Rutherford atomic model, Bohr's proposed his atomic model and its important postulates are like this. First postulate, the electron moves in defined circular path of fixed energy around a central nucleus. These paths are called orbits or energy labels. Electrons moving in these orbits do not radiate electromagnetic radiation. Such orbits are also called stationary states. Here the different stationary states are indicated and their different cells or orbits are represented by the symbol K L M N. Second postulate, the electron can change its cell or energy level by absorbing or releasing energy in the form of a single photon of radiation of appropriate frequency given by the relation E h nu that equal to E f minus E i. When the electron change its initial energy level with energy E 1 or you can say E i to the one with the final energy E f. This is the actual representation of exchange of energy when the electron changes its orbit. Now, the next concept is atomic number and mass number. Atomic number is equal to number of protons that is equal to number of electrons for the neutral atoms. Mass number it is equal to number of protons plus number of neutron that is equal to total number of nucleons. Atomic number and the mass number are represented on the symbol of an element. An element suppose x with atomic number z and the atomic mass number a is denoted as. For example, carbon 12 6 it means that the carbon has atomic number 6 and the mass number of 12. This can be used to compute the number of different fundamental particles in the atom. Let us calculate its electrons, protons and neutron for the carbon. As the atomic number is 6, this means number of protons that is equal to number of electron that is equal to 6, because it is a neutral atom. As mass number is equal to number of protons plus number of neutrons, we put the relation here 12 that is equal to 6 plus number of neutrons, then we get the number of neutrons is equal to 6. Thus, of an atom of C 12 6 C has 6 protons, 6 electrons and 6 neutrons. Electronic configuration that is followed by a rule or a scheme called Borbury scheme. According to this rule, the cell is an atom are represented by the letters K, L, M and that should be the capital or by the positive integers n is equal to 1, 2, 3, 4 that represents the number of cells, the first cell, second cell, third cell, fourth cell etcetera. Rule 2 the maximum number of electrons that can be accommodated in a cell is given by the formula 2 n square where n is the number of cells. Rule 3, the cells are occupied in the increasing order of their energies. That means, first uh, cell 1 will fill up, then cell electron will go to the second cell and third cell so on. Rule 4, the main group elements can have a maximum of 8 electrons in their outermost cell. This is this table indicates the sum of the values of electrons maximum electrons capacity of a particular cell K cell, L cell, M cell, N cell as well the formula they contains 2, 8, 18 and 32 electrons. This is the representation of uh, electron filled in different or orbits in the different elements. Now, the next important term is valency. Valency is the combining capacity of an element. 
it is also the number of chemical bonds that an atom can form with the univalent atoms. Valency of an element can be taken as the number of atoms of hydrogen with which one atom of element can combine. Valency and the number of valence electron, these are the two important terms, let us understand this. Valency of an element is governed by the number of its valence electron. If the number of valence electron is 4 or less, then the valency is equal to the number of valence electrons. In this case, valency is equal to number of valence electron if the electron is less than, valence electron is less than 4. If the number of valence electron is more than 4, valency is equal to 8 minus the number of valence electron. For example, valency is equal to 8 minus number of valence electron whose valence electron is more than 4. These are the representation of different elements, their symbol, their atomic number, their valence electron and the distribution of electrons in different cells. Dear learners, let us uh, recapitulate what we have learned in this chapter. According to Dalton's atomic theory, the atom is considered to be the smallest indivisible constituent of all matters. This theory could explain the law of conservation of mass, law of constant proportion and the law of multiple proportion. However, Certain experiments towards the end of 19th century show that the atom is neither the smallest nor the indivisible particle of matter. It was shown to made up of even smaller particles called electrons, protons and neutrons. Sir J. J. Thompson discovered that when very high voltage was passed across the electrodes in the cathode ray tube the cathode produce rays that travel from cathode to anode and we are called cathode rays. It shows that the rays were made up of a stream of negatively charged particles called electrons. The discovery of electrons meant that the atom is not indivisible as was believed by Dalton and others. Again, Goldstein discovered anode rays by using a perforated cathode, a cathode having holes in it. In the discharge tube fitted with air at a very low pressure, the discovery of anode rays established the presence of positive charge proton in the atom. According to Thomson plum pudding model, atom can be considered as a large sphere of uniform positive charge with a number of a small negatively charged electrons scattered throughout it. The alpha ray scattering experiment performed by Zeiser and the Mardation uh, led to the failure of Thomson's model of atom. In this experiment, a stream of alpha particles from a radioactive source was directed on a thin piece of gold foil, which is also known as Rutherford gold foil experiment. Most of the alpha particles pass straight through the gold foil. Some alpha particles were deflected by small angles and a few particles by large angles and the very few experience rebounds. The result of alpha ray scattering experiment were explained in terms of Rutherford model, according to which the atom contains a dense and positively charged region called nucleus at its center and negatively charged electrons moves around it. All the positive charge and most of the mass of atom is contained in the nucleus. The Rutherford model, however, failed as it could not explain the stability of atom. The distribution of electron and the relationship 
between the atomic mass and atomic number, the number of protons. The problem of the stability of the atom and the distribution of electron in the atom was solved by Niels Bohr in terms of Bohr's atomic model. Bohr's model can be understand in terms of two postulates, the first being electron moves in definite circular path of fixed energy around a central nucleus and the second is the electrons can change its orbit or energy level by absorbing or releasing energy. In 1932, James Chadwick discovered the electrically neutral particle in atom and named it as neutron. The number of protons in an atom is called the atomic number and it is noted as capital Z. On the other hand, the number of nucleons that is protons plus neutrons in the nucleus of an atom is called its mass number and it denoted by a symbol capital A. The electrons are distributed in different cells in order of increasing energy that was the Bohr's postulate. The distribution is called electronic configuration. The maximum number of electrons present in a cell is given by the formula 2 n square, where n is the number of the orbit or the cell. The valence is the number of chemical bonds that an atom can form with univalent atoms. If the number of valence electron is 4 or less, then the valency is equal to the number of the valence electrons. On the other hand, if the number of valence electron is more than 4, then generally the valency is equal to 8 minus number of valence cell electrons.